Maybe you just bought a fitness tracker, you're struggling to sleep, or you just want to focus on having a better and more alert day. I need to improve my sleep. In this video, I'm gonna share seven science-based tips on how to have better sleep. These are all taken from Andrew Huberman, Aura, Whoop. I'll have a whole bunch of links down below. And remember, this is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor. This is YouTube. This is for entertainment purposes only. Consult your doctor before anything. But I am a scientist. <laughs> Number one, sleep regularity. So when you wake up, when you go to bed, try to keep those times relatively consistent. I like to use the Whoop app where it kind of shows me in this weekly report my regularity of my bedtimes throughout the week. I am not perfect at it, but the one thing I do try to focus more on is having regular wake times rather than just sleep times because one is easier than two, so start with the easier one. I try to wake up around 7.30 every single day. This is based on my chronotype quiz and the DNA test that I did. And so far it seems to work. I feel rejuvenated and energized when I wake up, but it's just a matter of experimentation. I know if you have a social life and then on weekends you have that social jet lag where you wanna go out with friends and hang out, it can be a little bit tough. So I try to keep it consistent with just the wake times at least, even if I wanna stay up a little bit later at night to work or socialize. As long as I'm most of the time on most days, I'm waking up at the same time, we're good to go. Number two, temperature. Keeping the room and the sleeping environment at 68 degrees or less. There are multiple ways to do this. If you live in a cold environment, you can open the windows. If you have an air conditioning unit, you can turn on the air conditioning unit for your house or the room that you sleep in. And number three, which is my favorite, more expensive, is using the Eight Sleep Pod Pro cover. And this is a cover that goes on top of your current mattress and it can cool your mattress to a set temperature that you'd like. And it can actually change that temperature throughout the night. So for the first portion of the night, I will have the coldest temperatures. And then once I get into my REM sleep and it's time to wake up, the mattress cover will actually start to heat up and warm up. Code Sherman for $200 off. Number three, environment. So there's a couple of things that I try to make sure about the sleep environment, not only temperature, but also noise, right? I try to make sure that it's relatively quiet. And if I can't keep it quiet, I'll tend to wear earplugs. The amount of light that comes into the room. So I use blackout curtains. Oh. Okay, I used to use blackout curtains, but an alternative option is a sleep mask that you can wear over your eyes. And I have this really cool app that actually measures the ambient light as well as like temperature, humidity, air quality. So I make sure these environmental variables are in check every night when I go to bed. I've noticed that when I do wear a sleep mask and it's completely dark, I tend to sleep in later and it's just easier to feel more recovered the next day because if there is light coming in, my sleep just isn't as deep and I don't feel as rejuvenated. What works for me might not work for you. The only way to find out is to test an experiment. Number four, sunset and sunrise. So as, as nice as watching the sunrise and sunset is, it actually can be extremely effective for setting your circadian rhythm, according to Dr. Andrew Huberman. So this is something I've been trying to do more of, especially with watching the sunset. I've noticed that if I watch the sunset, it's easier to start to fall asleep later on in the night. And if you're a person who, like me, likes to be on their phone at night and you have all this blue light coming in in the evening, if you watch the sunset, it can actually minimize slightly the impact of all the blue light that you're getting after the sunset. That's just something I've noticed. I, I feel like it's easier to fall asleep if I watch the sunset, even if I'm gonna Netflix and chill in my bed. So that's another variable that I've been recently experimenting with and it seems to relatively work. And it's just an enjoyable experience. Number five, leaving your bed, yoga nidra, or NSDR, non-sleep de-rest, if you're struggling to stay asleep. I'm a deep sleeper, so I don't struggle with this as much and I haven't tried this, but I read on Matthew Walker and Dr. Angie Huberman that if you do non-sleep deep rest or yoga nidra, or if you're just struggling to stay asleep, get out of your bed, walk around, do something else, because your bed should be the place where you just have sleep and sex. Yes. yes! And that's it. Because if you do anything else, your brain will be wired to stay awake and like do homework and things like that. So anytime you're struggling to stay asleep, get out of bed, do this breath work, these kind of exercises to help you fall asleep. Number six, this one's huge. I think this one is like one of the easier ones to do. Maybe not. Avoid alcohol, caffeine, late night food, and naps longer than 90 minutes. For me, I've noticed when I have alcohol, my recovery scores will be at like 1% and my fitness trackers are yelling at me. Do better, Shervin, you can do better. The second piece is caffeine. I've noticed if I have caffeine after 2 p.m., about eight to 10 hours before I go to bed, it can actually detriment my ability to fall asleep and get into a deeper state of sleep. So it's something to experiment. I now have this concrete rule where I do not drink coffee after 2 p.m. Decaf is okay, but I try to not avoid any coffee after 2 p.m. And so far it's really helped with falling asleep and staying asleep. For the late night eating, uh, I struggle with this one, but I've noticed that when I do do that, like my scores will be a little bit off on the aura and it might say like, oh, did you eat or have caffeine late? So it keeps my heart rate up a little bit higher than usual when I sleep. So it's in really interesting to see that data and be kind of this self scientist. And then naps, I, I honestly, I struggle with nap at all. So I don't do that. Number seven, have a wind down routine. So in the Apple iPhone features, there is like a night mode, a sleep schedule that you can set up with an awake alarm. 
I like to use this feature because it will actually like shut off a lot of the features on my phone and it makes it harder to use my iPhone. And as a part of that routine, sometimes I'll wear my handy dandy blue light blockers because the best way to make sure that you don't have any friends and no one wants to talk to you is to look like a weirdo. Other things that you can do is like breath work or meditation. I know there's cool sleep tools in the eight sleep app that I sometimes like to use. You can do a hot shower to help decrease your body temperature right before you go to bed. One big thing is I try to avoid scrolling through TikTok while I'm in bed, but if I really, really want to, like every single night when I do it, I make sure to wear these girlfriend blocking glasses every single night. I mean, blue light blocking glasses. And then lastly, magnesium. I, I think it might be my diet or what I'm eating and how I'm eating, but I am slightly deficient in magnesium. It could also be that I drink way too much coffee. So a big piece is supplementing with magnesium when I go to bed. Magnesium L3 and 8, I heard was also good. Make sure you're getting the right type of magnesium that can be helpful for your sleep. Some people have said CBD or melatonin. I do not use those supplements, but these are all different things that you can experiment, right? Get a sleep tracker. My favorite sleep tracker is Whoop because they give you this cool journaling feature where you can actually go ahead and measure like how much your being single impacts your sleep. So far, it really helps. The only way to understand, do these behaviors actually help your sleep is to kind of measure it and see that data inside of an app. Like for example, magnesium. I don't feel a noticeable difference, but when I do measure it in my whoop, I notice that like my resting heart rate's a little bit lower and these like tiny metrics and it's like motivated me to continue taking the magnesium. I think with the proliferation of wearables, sleep trackers, activity trackers, more and more people are starting to be aware and focus on their sleep as well as fitness activity. And I think it's also a great way to use these sleep trackers to experiment with your own lifestyle. All these things that you hear on YouTube and podcasts, do they actually work for you? Because a lot of things can work for most people, but they might not work for you and they might work for you. So the only way to find out is to test it and understand with data from different kinds of sleep trackers. On my next video, make sure to watch how to increase your HRV.